Welcome to Modern Musings, Conversations with the Maiden, Mother, and Crone. Looking at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hello and welcome back. I'm your hostess, Kristen, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Amber and Cindy. Hi! Hey! If this is your first time joining us, we are glad to have you here. And if you're returning, then welcome back. We're also glad to have you here, too. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Always. Yes. um, I'm excited about this topic today. Um, We are kind of revisiting uh, a topic that we had discussed before, but more on like a more specific note, uh, literally. We are talking about journaling your vacation or journaling while you're on your vacation. Which we did talk about right um, before Christmas. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And we talked about how to travel with your Taking your crafts. Your crafts. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say. We did have an episode back in December or November, I believe, yes. where uh-huh. we talked about taking your crafts with you on on your vacation. Yes. So that you have like that leisurely relaxation, kind of one-on-one inspiration time. Um, and so we kind of touched on this topic because it was – kind of part of the discussion um but um we're kind of talking about like the act of actually like documenting your trip as you go um and when we started talking about this topic I was immediately reminded of um when I took American literature uh the different authors who actually practiced this regularly because it was a type of um, literature that was mm-hmm. very common in uh, the early Americas um, during like colonization and the exploration of America yes. itself. Yes. Transcendentalism. And, yes. And uh, so like Walt Whitman, Mark Twain, uh, those type of authors journaled while they were, you know, experiencing their explorations. Yes. Um, and then I think you also talked about one, um, the Brazos, the author that wrote about yes. traveling the Brazos. Um, John Graves um, wrote Goodbye to a River. And um, he was a journalist and author. Um, and he wrote about his trip down the Brazos before uh, right before they put the dam in at Possum Kingdom, mm-hmm. and um, and he took like a I want to say it was like a two week trip, um, most of it solo in a canoe down the river, and and wrote about his travels, um, and it is actually required reading at the University of Texas at Austin. So um, it's a fascinating book, and and it's written in that style, you know, where he uh, not only talked about the land and the um, the the flora and fauna and the weather, but also his childhood experiences and the history of the mm-hmm. area and yeah. so many things. It's uh, it, it a really bit is of shadow work while he was doing it. Well, too, yeah, right? probably so. <laughs> um, it, it's a really I. I've always loved this form of writing. It's always fascinated me because um, I like that documenting history um, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And, but also just um, that exploring your, while you're exploring the world around you, you're also exploring your own inner space. Um, You know, your, your, your own space soul or your shadow or right, whatever right. you want to call it yeah, and so. we yes. actually talked about that a little bit too when we were talking about memory keeping yes um, yes i guess maybe that was like a month ago um, mm-hmm. yeah a few podcasts back we were talking about memory keeping and actually like documenting journaling. your travel yeah and and just the, the stories that you can tell all of your stories um, yeah. yeah all of your yeah. stories and i think you had mentioned one amber that was um someone sailing around cape horn uh yes i actually um I did an extensive research in college on Cape Horn. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the author's name. But uh, reading about his works and some of the things that he wrote about made me really want to travel down to the quote-unquote end of the world. That's what they call it down there, Cape Horn. Well, you know, Magellan um, did extensive, you know, all, all of the explorers always had 
um, extensive logs mm-hmm. that they wrote, journals. Oh, yeah, um, the, the, the captain's logs. The captain's logs or whatever that they kept. Um, the pilots would have notes about, you know, where the reefs were or the whatever, you know, so that they yes. could safely traverse that area again. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of um, things that have, come, you know, a lot of literature that has been grown up around that. Um well, I mean, a while back we were talking about Frankenstein, and uh, the book starts out as kind of like a travel journal. Oh, he's their writing. Ship is yeah. going in between the little ice yes. chunks in the north. Yeah, yeah. and he's uh, writing letters to his sister. Oh, so it, it yeah. kind of starts at can he's logging everything that is happening and sending the letters to his sister right. when they make port. So it is kind of, it starts out kind of as a travel journal, journal, him meeting Victor Frankenstein. Right. So actually you made me think of, I was trying to think back, like, when did I ever do travel journaling? Because I've seen my mom do it and I was going to share that memory of when I first noticed it and I became inspired. But then I started to think about, okay, when did I ever do that? You know, because I, I used to go to scout camp every summer. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't necessarily like journaling, but they always encouraged us to write a letter home. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I thought that's really cool because postcards are also kind of like that. You're putting like your stamp. Oh, well, mm-hmm. no pun intended. On <laughs> on your trip, right? And, and you're just kind of like writing out to like, hey, we did this really cool thing. Here's a picture of mm-hmm. the place that we went. It's almost mm-hmm. like a little paper souvenir and we had the wonderful thing and we tried this and we met some awesome people right and then you mail it off or or you just keep the postcard right right um and i remembered i was like oh i remember they used to have us go to the canteen and buy um you know a stamp and some pen and paper and we could write a letter home and in a sense you're kind of journaling because you're writing home to tell mom and dad what you're doing at camp yes you know and they may keep your letter and you can go back and read it you know right 20 years from then and be like wow that's really cool you know i i I forgot i did that Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um the first time i ever realized oh journaling on your vacation is so beneficial was when my mom and our really dear friend uh went on a cruise together and um this was our very first cruise it was like one of like the biggest vacations I'd ever been on before and um, my mom had this little tiny notepad or like uh, all-purpose notebook or journal diary it was whatever small one, yeah. yeah it was small <laughs> and she would sit in the bed every night and just write down every little detail all the things that she could remember that we did and that was that, helpful having was, both of y'all there to help me remember it too. right yeah. right and it was really neat too because uh, her friend also created her own And so they swapped notes, they typed them up and swapped them. And so it was so neat to have both of their perspectives perspectives and their different stories and things that they shared because one of them would remember something else. And I went back and I looked at, uh, I don't even remember which one of y'all's notes it was, but I was like, oh, wow, I forgot about that guy on the cruise ship that was doofus or something, you know? (laughs) And (laughs) because it was like a little detail. Very unenlightened of us, but yeah. Right, I know, yeah, we were being silly. Um, He was fun. uh, (laughs) I just was like, I would have never remembered that, you know? Yeah. So it was fun to go back and read those notes Mm -hmm. and, and so I've always been inspired to do some type of documenting like that. I'm struggling to find something that I'm really consistent with. Um, it's oftentimes, hard. Oftentimes it really is because I'm very like squirrel, you know. Right. If I'm the passenger in the car, I'm looking. I, I couldn't sit and write in the car. And when I'm laying in bed, if someone turns a TV on in the hotel You're room, distracted. I'm distracted. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. I And I have that problem too because – when we go on those trips, often somebody wants to turn the TV on or we we don't come back to the room until we're just exhausted. And then it's like you're mm-hmm. looking at your book and you're like, I still have the whole day to journal. Yeah. Um, but but you kind of just have to be um, self-disciplined about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, at Christmas, uh, we went on a, a cruise at Christmas with the whole family. And I set out to scrapbook and, um, yeah, and to journal on the, on the thing, as you well know. And I, well, 
First off, I didn't start journaling before we left on the trip, which that I think is one of the, the lesson number one that I want to teach people in this is start your journaling before you leave because you have to start with the reason why Mm -hmm. and how. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, where you're going, why you're going there, you know, who, what, when, where, why, and, and how. And because if you just start journaling about your day, then you have to backtrack and um, explain those things while you're there. So I failed to do that starting out because as with all trips, I am always rushing, rushing, rushing to get my work wrapped up, to get packed, to get everybody else organized. And so I didn't get started and I got very little sleep and I was driving, so I couldn't ride in the car. So, you know, we get to the first day and, and I'm already a day behind. So, um, I got behind, I did get it done eventually, but it took me a while and I'm sure I forgot a lot of things because I was running a day or two behind in all of my journaling. Oh, right, so, right. Because, you weren't writing it in the moment. No, I yeah. wasn't. And I would write, you know, a whole day's worth, but it was two days ago. So I'm like forgetting half the stuff. And the last couple of days, you know, we came home from the trip and I had not journaled the last couple of days. And it took me a while to get back to that mm-hmm. just because I was tired and wanted to move on. And mm-hmm. so that's, yeah. that's my first tip. Start out already journaling. That way you've already got it started and there's nothing keeping you from journaling that first day. Right. When Amber, I have a question because I'm looking at these, you know, we're talking about like journaling a vacation and Mm -hmm. a lot of times we're going on a vacation to get away from social media and the hubbub Mm -hmm. and hustle Mm -hmm. bustle. But we also pressure ourselves to do everything on our vacation because like oh you only get to go once you know so we try to do everything and so there's a lot of rushing and there's not a lot of relaxing um but like someone like walt whitman and i'm so sorry because i'm not like a literary buff but isn't he the one that kind of like moved out to the woods and was kind of staying there and like experiencing nature and stuff right yes walden pond Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. there we go okay i was like i think i know this but i'm not a positive (laughs) so he like separated himself from everything Mm -hmm. and that's where he was able to like develop his writing and right which a lot of people like aspire to do that to go on those sabbatical sabbatical or yeah yeah, Yeah. staycation or or like yeah Yeah. retreats Mm -hmm. and i wish i did that more because I get so inspired sometimes when I'm just in a room alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As compared to like all of or, the other distractions or like sitting the on TV the porch or pets or something. Coffee while you're mm-hmm. looking out at nature. Yeah. yeah. There's something about being in a, hard in a hotel in Texas, room though. that's nice yeah, and clean is. and organized and it's not full of like stuff that's like yeah stimulants like uh, yes. like all of your things around you mm-hmm. and you have all of your things and you just want to look at them and not do what you came there to do so. you want to play with your toys mm-hmm. yeah yeah so I, I think that's really interesting like it's a challenge for us in today's society because we have like everywhere we go there's those stimulating things so many things going on yeah so many things and it's like when we went on our cruise it was funny because like my dad kept saying i went on this cruise to get away from my phone and here i have to use my phone for everything because we had to use it to check in Mm -hmm. in the dining Uh room or we had to use it to communicate with each other because you know otherwise you can't really get a hold of every our big group you know it was like we were using it to chat with each other so like and then you use it to take pictures so the whole time we were on the trip i had my phone in right. my hand mm-hmm. well and oh go ahead instead Sorry. of like my pen and paper well or something but like that but yeah. what i was gonna suggest is that you can actually use your phone to do your journaling because mm-hmm. that's speech, what i do speech to text um you know just uh open up a note or in your notepad and just start dictating. Photo journaling. That's yes. what I do yeah. on a daily basis. Yes. 
that's um that's my whole and then I can go back and write in right. what is happening but why yeah but and that was that was one of the things yeah. that saved me journaling our cruise because because I was two days behind I could actually look back at those photos right and say oh that's what we did that's what we did uh-huh. and you know I had them there to look at yeah and that's that's one good thing about carrying a camera around with you Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about having a phone. And when they came at, sorry, coming out with camera phones is because I already carried a camera around with me everywhere, just a digital camera. And now I have a camera and a phone. I don't have to carry multiple items around with me. So the, the takeaway I think probably is that like we're not all Mark Twain's or well, you yeah. know, well, Walt no, Whitman's I mean, or, well, there's a, there's a lot <laughs> right. of things in our world that, but, like you talk about the distractions that they didn't have there, yeah, right? They had a lot more things. downtime, right? And, you know. you and, we're, know. and we're also not like literary masters either. But what I'm thinking is just it's not it's it's not to be like the perfect, um, you know, writings and journalings, not to be perfect at it, but just to capture the moment. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think a lot of times, like, when you're on your vacation, you have those profound moments. And um, sometimes you just see something and you think differently. I get a new perspective on life, right? right? And yes. I think it's important to capture those moments and then work them out. Um, you know, write those things Even out. Even if it's and... just a dear diary kind of thing, you know, where <laughs> yeah. you're, like, today I saw the most beautiful sunset. And mm-hmm. it made me think of... How small and insignificant yeah. we are, or whatever. Well, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But it, 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 and you don't have to be the most prolific writer. You don't have to. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody even has to read it. Right. It's right. really only for you and the memories that and, you create. And the mem- memories that you've created. Yeah. And to help, because as we get older, we, we lose that ability to recall those memories. And so, you know, in having those things, that's that's helpful just to go back and, oh, yeah, I did that. Aw. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, that just sent me down like a mental rabbit hole, like looking at old vacation pictures oh, of yeah. uh, my family going yeah. to... Vegas, because we went to Vegas a lot, you know, and just uh, thinking back like, uh, well, I need to take those and turn those into their own memory book, travel journal things, and yeah. journal under each yeah. picture. Mm-hmm. Well, that would, I, I that would think be a nice all the, project. All, all the camping trips I went on with my family where we didn't take pictures, yeah. you know, because we didn't always own a camera. Um, and, you know, I have... Um, Polaroid pictures in my head, you know, like this instant flash of a memory. I, you know, I can picture the place where we were and it, everything's like these little snapshots and I remember the stories behind them, but I don't always remember all the specifics or, you know, things like that. So it, it would have been nice to have those, um, to have a journal of some sort to, to go back and remember that because there are no pictures. It's all, it's all only in my head. Mm -hmm. So, so for someone who wanted to write with like pen and paper, Mm -hmm. what are some of the different things you would suggest for someone who's starting out for journaling a vacation? Ooh. Um, well, I think a comfortable pen is the most important thing. One that you can, you know, that's dependable. Um, and that, that's kind of entirely up to you. I've um, and just, a comfortable notebook, something and a num- that you and a comfortable notebook, like. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I've used a lot of different kinds of things. I've used traveler's notebooks. I've used spirals. I've used mm-hmm. smaller spirals. Um, I feel like the smaller it is, the more likely you're going to take it with with you. you but also you the travel. the more difficult it is to write in. Exactly, because yeah. the, the smaller ones don't necessarily lay flat um, and they're and you know you only get a little bit you're you're gonna have to write a lot of pages to cover one day mm-hmm. um, but but definitely by having a small you know like a like maybe a three by four or a four by six 
those would fit in a purse or a fanny pack or something like that. Um, when we walked the three day, I always had one on my fanny pack. Um, when we walked the Susan G. Komen three day for, you know, many years and I would, uh, clip it to the outside of my fanny pack and my pen was on a, um, a lanyard reel so that I could just pull it out and write without, and then just let it go. And it would like go back up in the reel and I wouldn't lose it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it could just hang there. And, um, and that made it, you know, I didn't have to dig it out of a pocket or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. so that was an, an easy way to do it. So, but, but definitely a, a comfortable pen, pen that you like because, um, and, and maybe more than one, because if you write a lot, you may run out of ink. So, or mm -hmm. if your vacation's very long, um, I, I like gel pens cause they write really smoothly. Um, Oh, me too. So, Those so are my I can, favorite. I can write really fast, um, and not worry about them hanging on the paper, no matter how cheap the paper is. Um, you also want to think about the quality of the paper in the notebook. If it's really thin, it might tear easily. Um, or if you try to scratch something out, it might break through or it might ghost through to the other, other pages, side. Yeah. So, um, and in that case, you might want to write only on one side of the paper, um, just depending on how bad it was. But what was your least successful um, journaling on a travel that didn't sound right. That didn't right. <laughs> derby, derby, derby. My least, um, well, any of them that were incomplete and there's been plenty of those where I started, you <laughs> That's know, me, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how I could be more successful at it because right. I, I just keep trying like, okay, maybe it wasn't the book or, you know, maybe it was me yeah. in this case. Well, but, I like, actually what I have to make it more easy for me. I have one book. I, I moved to a, a composition notebook at one point in time that I was writing in, um, that I took on several cruises and I had probably three or four different cruises in that same book, but it, um, uh, one of them in there, I just absolutely, I got about halfway through the cruise and I, I didn't write just any more too in much it. Fun. I, I just, I don't know if I got too tired, too, too busy to what, but, um, it's, it's incomplete. Now I could probably go back and remember remember a few things you know but um i that's probably my least successful ones so okay uh, i just recently started doing this like a specifically writing in a journal on vacations i started last summer when i went on a family vacation with my fiance and his family and i um just happened to well, I kind of fell into it by chance because I was in half price books and I saw this um, little journal that uh, had a map on the outside of it. It was like, it looked mm, like a like, global this is map. For my trip. And oh, I was yeah. just like, uh, this is kind of cool. I'm going to use it for something. I didn't specifically say for a trip or anything like that. Mm. I was just like, uh, because I collect journals and I oh, was yeah. just like, uh, um, well, this if is kind of cool. Could see I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, um, and then whenever, Y'all had talked about travel journaling in the past, so when I went on that vacation, I took it with me, and I wrote notes in it, and uh, entries kind of logging what we did, like you were talking about. And then, of course, I kind of fell off halfway through and then went back into it. But um, I also, you know, took a million pictures, as I always do, so I'm able to go back in right. and fill in the details. Mm -hmm. Right. I think what you said earlier, I'm going to go back to that, you mentioned starting before you go on your trip. Oh, yeah. I think just being in the habit of journaling is probably the That's probably key the best, factor. the key yeah. factor there is and getting into the so habit hard. of daily journaling. Um, and. And maybe not try to get as much detail always, you know, maybe. Yeah, bullet points at least would have been. Right. Preferable to nothing. to nothing. Right. Yeah. Um, I will say, I w going back to the least um, successful one, 
I actually, after Amber started talking, I mm-hmm. remembered um, the first time that we took the whole family on a canoe trip down the Brazos. I did bring um, my a little um, travel journal and um, some watercolors and, and stuff, and I was going to um, journal my trip. And I never actually even got it out of the Yeah, backpack. I didn't take mine yeah. either. I, I also brought I like a little it. pack. I packed it. It was in there. And I, I we never pulled it so out. so exhausted because we were going yeah. against the wind the yeah, whole that was time. Such and we were so a, tired. And it was like we 100 like... degrees. And we were so tired. I think that and if you did. hadn't had of taken it, then you would have wished that oh, yeah, you definitely. had yeah. like definitely. a... Always be prepared, and that's why I always bring my APN with me and everything yeah. like that, and my art journal and stuff, because you never know yeah. when you're going to get those hidden moments to sit out on the deck if you're on a cruise or go into the woods if you're mm-hmm. camping or whatever, and get those stolen moments to write down right. your thoughts and feelings. Yeah, I yeah. agree. One of my tips I would say is, um, looking at like the size of a journal, don't make yourself feel like you have to fill up that whole journal while you're oh, on yeah. the trip. Mm-mm. And then also don't make yourself feel like you have to have a separate journal for every trip. Cause that's the right. mistake yeah. that I made. Which is- I have all of these like two page entries of journals yeah. that I'm like, I'm going to make a new one because this time I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to fill this whole book with my whole trip and it's going to be perfect. Right. And then <laughs> I go back home and there's several two pages. Of, written. Several of mine are actual travel journals um, or a, a traveler's log um, or just a diary or journal. Yeah. And then, and it, I've uh, indexed or tabbed um, the places where different trips start. So there's multiple trips. And if, if you go back and look at like, um, you know, like a Darwin or someone else like that, who also, um, kept journals and logs and things like that Mm -hmm. on his expeditions, you know, he, he did, he had multiple books and he, you know, they extended over long periods of time. So he was the true APN keeper. Yes. Yes. Oh, and right. So Cause origin all of, of the species notes. is a sketch. Is it's like a sketch book. Yes. And journals. Yes. Yeah. That's a great example. He's a great example of, and it doesn't have to going back to what Kristen was talking about and some of what you were talking about and, and the examples that some of these um, people um, present to us, it, you know, it doesn't have to be, a report on what you did on your trip. It could just be feelings. It could be a brief poem. It could be a sketch of a leaf or a rock or a hidden trail through the woods. Um, you know, most of Darwin's, um, things were, were sketches of plants and animals and things like that because they were, he was studying how, they had changed, uh, evolved, you know, over the, over the course of time differently from other areas of the world. And so, you know, his, his notes and his sketches were the bigger part of it. And, you know, a lot of prolific writers will just sit and write poetry or it could be, um, something more like Anne Frank's diary, uh, where it's just sporadic entries every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, but it could also just be, this place is so peaceful. I, when I sit here, I realize how insignificant I am in the scope of things. And I wish I could stay here and not have to go back to the petty stuff, you know, Um, it, it's up to you what you put in it. Um, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could be all of the above. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. No rules. No rules. I like the no rules thing. Yes. Um, we, we were talking about different ways and, and another one, um, that's quick and easy to use is a technique called sketch noting. And I think I've mentioned this one, um, before it's, yes. w- it's one I've used. Uh, in fact, I used it on a family camping trip, um, maybe a couple of years ago. 
and um, I use the Traveler's Journal. And the idea is that you sketch little icons. Um, you're not really writing a journal entry or a diary. You're just sketching the major points, but in a very icon way. Like I'm not trying to line draw. Yeah. yeah, very, very simple line drawing. So I'm not trying to draw this beautiful tree that I see there or whatever. I'm just drawing a little sketch of people walking on a trail, like stick figures walking on a trail um, to say that we took a hike. Or maybe I'll draw a funny little cartoon car mm -hmm. that says we took a road trip. And and then I put little notes out beside it to indicate what it is. And, and that way, in that way, I'm not really journaling the whole trip but i am because i've got all the high points on there and often what i'll do is sketch note these little um icons cartoons whatever you want you know stick figures whatever you want to call them and then i will um leave a space for like a two by three photo if i know there's something that i took a photo of with my phone or something that I want to capture photographically. And I have a little um, HP uh, pocket printer that does two by three photos with sticky back paper on it. And I'll take a picture and slap it in there. And um, that that is a really quick way to document things too. Because I've documented it with a photo. I've got a little sketch. There's a little bit of words. But I don't have to use a lot of words. And I can cover a lot of ground on one or two pages just with these sketches because I can draw out a, a plate of bacon and eggs and then I re and write the name of the restaurant and remember, oh, we went to Susie's Diner for bacon and eggs for breakfast. And and there I've, I've just covered that whole topic, uh, what would have taken me a paragraph or more to write about. I did it with a simple line drawing and a title, the name of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, and then sometimes I even go back with my pens, color pencils or watercolors or whatever and color them in. And I love, love, love this, the idea of sketch noting. And I will leave a link for that on the blog. Um, it, for anybody that's interested in that method, because I've used it on a lot of, a lot of different trips and it's a really fun, quick way to do that. And uh, teachers that are listening, it is a very effective way for kids to take notes in the classroom. Absolutely. Because yes. we do that a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, and in fact, that, that's what it was developed as, was a, a way to take notes in meetings and mm -hmm. um, things like that, where you're not having to write down verbatim what the teacher is saying or what the leader is saying. And um, it, it, the method teaches you to quickly sketch these little line drawings because you can grasp the idea by the picture yeah. and the little title. Instead of writing everything out, yeah. Yes, it's fabulous. I <laughs> love it. You should see my meeting notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, it's, it's really cool. I, I like it. Very cool, very cool. Well, ladies, did you have any other uh, things you wanted to mention? Um, no, uh, I find journaling very effective. I'm very inconsistent about it, but uh, I enjoy doing it. I, I do too. And I, you know, like I say, I don't always finish them. And sometimes I have copious notes <laughs> and, and I've written every detail like the, the cruise that we went on together. Um, and then sometimes I have a few little jotted notes and that's as far as I got. So, uh, yeah. I, I like to try though, because I, I like documenting in that mm -hmm. way. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about next week? Next week, our topic is synchronicity versus serendipity. And, um, what is it? And, um, have you ever experienced it? And, okay. um, it's kind of a possibly meta topic. Maybe. I don't know. Um, some people, yeah. it is a little philosophy because I mean, some people think of it as woo woo. Mm -hmm. Some people think of it as not. And I will just have to kind of explore that a little bit. No, I'd so, say it's I'm a little like, bit of both. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm cool. looking forward to that. Very fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we do want to thank our listeners, our loyal, loyal listeners. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we also want to thank Red Door Studios and Creative Audio Tech for our music and our recording yes, yes, equipment. Yes. Um, without our listeners and our equipment, we would be just a bunch of people just standing in a room talking, which is usually what we do. So we do it anyway. So <laughs> yes, true enough. But um, we also am. Uh, appreciate the likes and shares especially the shares um you know if you heard anything that you liked or saw another podcast um that meant something to you definitely share it um Mm -hmm. because the more people that we can um you know chat with yes um, Yes. we we like that we like uh having a, a lot of broad topics and and, and having that conversation with other people, you know, bringing others into that conversation, mm-hmm. especially on the Facebook group or in the comments, um, you know, things like that. Comments on the blog. Yeah, yeah. Continue the conversation with us over on our MMC chat on Facebook. Yes. Um, or on our blog. We also have uh, various topics going on on the blog as well. Uh, sometimes there aren't even what we're talking about today. So you got to check it out so you don't miss anything. Right. Yes. And, and you can definitely. get to that on modernmusings.net. All right. And we look forward to chatting with you next time. Yes, we do. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.